Ah, uh, marble sculptures. Probably one of the most confusing and random mechanics in DST. It involves all sorts of nonsense, like full moons, new moons, marble, stone, sculptures, more sculptures, hammering things, and there's even trinkets thrown in there somewhere. It's just a big confusing mess. <laughs> Thankfully, you're watching this video where I'm going to explain what the hell is going on with these white rocks. And to be honest, while researching for this video, I discovered some stuff that even I'd never heard of before. So, strap yourselves in, it's going to be a sort of wild ride. The first thing that you'll notice in your world is strange sculptures littered around. These sculptures will always spawn in the world generation. They take the form of a large pile of marble, a pot or vase on a pillar, and whatever the hell this is. When mined, these sculptures will begin to look like the three clockwork types. The large lump will turn into part of a rook, the pot will turn into part of a bishop, and the thing will turn into part of a knight. The next step is finding suspicious marbles dotted around the map in random locations. They will take the shape of the head of a clockwork knight, the head of a clockwork bishop, and a cactus kind of thing, which is actually the nose of the clockwork rook. Now begins the painful part. You have to carry these things all the way to the sculptures. Since beefaloes aren't affected by the player's speed, you can use them to, to quickly carry the suspicious marbles around. Nevertheless, to be honest, it's faster overall just to carry them yourself instead of taking the time and resources to tame a beefalo right from the start. Once you have mined the sculptures, you can place the correct suspicious marble onto them. If you hammer the completed sculptures on a full moon, they will spawn the corresponding clockwork, along with a sketch to make them again. More on that later. You can kill these, as per usual, to obtain some gears along with the purple gem in the case of a bishop. Hammering the completed statues on the new moon will spawn the corresponding shadow clockwork bosses. I'm not going to go into much detail on these bosses here, as they're pretty complicated. But basically, you can endure a difficult fight with multiple of the bosses to upgrade them, kill the upgraded versions, and then obtain the Shadow Atrium, which is required to fight the final boss, per se, of the game, the Ancient Fuel Weaver. Once the marble statues have been destroyed, the only way to obtain the Shadow Clockwork bosses again is to make the chess piece sculptures from a potter's wheel. Once you build the potter's wheel, you will need to get the blueprints to make the respective chess pieces. One way to do this is by giving a black or white trinket respective to the chess piece you want to the pig king. These trinkets can be found the way any other trinket can, by digging graves or in tumbleweeds. The sketches themselves can also be found in tumbleweeds, if you're incredibly lucky. Click on the sketch in your inventory and then on the potter's wheel. Now you can craft the respective statue with either one marble or one cut stone, plus two additional rocks. On the new moon, these handcrafted statues can be hammered down to spawn their shadow clockworks, just like the original statues. However, they don't spawn regular clockworks if hammered on the full moon. So that's all for this video. In light of the new event, The Forge, no, I will not be making a tutorial video about it. The main reason for this is the fact that The Forge is a limited time event, therefore my guide video would become redundant once The Forge ends. In my opinion, it's also a bit more enjoyable to experience The Forge yourself, before looking up tutorials for it. Anyway, yeah, that's all. See you next time, etc. Funny punchline. <laughs>